Hey yo, what's going on guys? This is Mike Reed here. Welcome back to another tour review by yours truly. So today, um, <laughs> I got a doozy of a review for you guys. Uh, because, yes, if you've read the title, it's yet another LEGO Technic supercar. Well, not supercar, but race car. Um, or just one of the many, many model cars that I've been collecting over the last couple years. And this one is kind of a mixed bag, to say the least. Uh, I've been split on this vehicle since the moment it was revealed. I wasn't really a big fan of it. But I ended up getting it anyway uh, as a surprise present from my parents. So, okay, shout out to them for giving me this very nice car for the collection. But uh, at the same time, oh my god. Uh... I'm going to mention this right now before we get into the review. The first the first portion of this review is going to be extremely negative. So if you're not a fan of that, uh, yeah, you should probably skip this part of the video now. Because it's... Oh, oh, <laughs> I got a couple choice words to say about this set. Particularly, uh, it's, it's an abysmal build process. Well, not abysmal, but it's just grueling build process. Anyway, let me bring in the box. So today we're taking a look at the Lego Technic Porsche 911 RSR. So right at the front, as you can see, we do have the Lego Technic logo there. And of course, hey, look, that's the actual car itself. Uh, it is officially licensed by Porsche. So I guess thanks for this and uh 1580 pieces oddly 10 did they expect 10 year olds to build this what <laughs> okay that's a little weird uh and how many pieces does this have it doesn't say oh it's just right, it's right there i just read it 1580 pieces okay and of course hey this is a building toy um Moving on to the top real quick, just to change it up, uh, we have a smaller little image of the Porsche 911 RSR, and hey, that's the actual size of the tires. Uh, and then of course you have components made in Denmark, Hungary, Mexico, China, the USA, and the Czech Republic. Great! Uh, moving on to the back, because the sides have nothing on them, we do have a little illustration of the interior. Authentic interior details. Ooh. Okay. And then you have the actual 911 RSR there with uh, some little specifications there, which eh, they're okay, but we're going to go in-depth, as we always do with these model cars. Um, Six-cylinder engine with moving pistons, because, of course, they have to have that, especially for this asking price. Ugh. Uh, and then, of course, you have a sort of rear view of this very, very nice race car. So, moving that out of the way... Let's go ahead and bring in the RSR. Okay, there we go. Oh, can't even get it all in frame. Uh, but here it is. This is the actual 911 RSR set fully built. And yeah, it's a big boy. <laughs> it's a big one. Uh, for, I guess, a size reference, um, which, of course, we'll get into comparisons here later, uh, it's about the size of the Peugeot uh, 9x8, give or take. Uh, so, pretty big set. Uh, so make it, And that also makes this set about one eighth scale. But, anyhow, so we have, of course, <laughs> the design here just off, just off the bat. I love the design of this thing. Um, so, but, of course, as I said... I'm going to start off with the negatives because I have a lot of negatives. So again, skip this part now if you don't want to hear me rant. Because uh, I know maybe some of you don't like that. Or maybe some of, you do, some of you do. I don't know. But anyway, so first things first, this thing's build process was a chore. It was not fun because you had to open up all the bags which and by all the bags i mean if i was to guesstimate i believe there was uh, too many uh, too many that's that's the answer too many bags that you had to open and there were so many little pins so many little little stud pieces just so much stuff and you had to keep all that organized and keep it all okay one of the little windows is tilted there we go um and keep everything in check just to get this thing built. Just to get it built. Uh, not only that, but there are so many stickers on this thing. 
and I don't like that. <laughs> there, there's one thing I hate about these model cars, especially the most recent ones. They have so many stickers. As a matter of fact, and of course they're off screen, so give me one second. One. Let me actually give you guys a look at the exact sticker sheets that you had to use for this thing. Look at this. Look at this. All of that. Yeah, all those little square spaces, all those little numbers. Yeah, those are all stickers I had to put on this thing. All of them. All of that. I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but it is. A lot of stickers. So, not a big fan of that. Which most of those could have been prints. Uh, I believe there's like not even a single print in this set. Actually, wait. Yes, there is. I'm stupid. Uh, the wheel, the real wells. Um, those are prints. Everything else is a sticker. Good lord. Um, so, not a big fan of that. And yes, I know there is a build that somehow managed to eclipse this car sticker sheet like by a metric ton and i'm not even gonna begin to mention how much i don't want that set just for the amount of stickers just no thank you i understand it's a race car and it's supposed to have all these licenses and it's supposed to stand out on the track so you can actually you know see it as it's going you know at 100 miles an hour you know around the track i understand that but like come on man how, how many stickers do you need dude Honestly, um, and another thing I really don't like about this set is you see these little pieces right here? Yeah, flex tubing. I hate this flex tubing so much because first of all, it never wants to stay in place. Like even right now, they're not staying in place very well. Um, not only that, but oh my God, if you mess it up, it is a nightmare, a nightmare. To deal with because it is so easy to just if because especially if you're using your nails to kind of try to pull the little tube over the pieces that you're trying to apply it to you can easily mess it up and crinkle it up and it just looks ugly so i had to be so careful with those and it really really sucks now this flex tubing right here that's kind of used for the hood that's fine but this flex tubing this sucks i hate this flex tubing and you have to do it what is it one two six whole times six times on this set you have to use this tubing it sucks and i hate it so much um not only that but the actual internal skeleton of this thing overstays its welcome by a by a large margin i hate the skeleton of this car it was not fun to build now putting the shell on give or take these stupid things uh was fine it was great but everything else oh uh, no thank you <laughs> so now that i'm done ranting about this thing uh what do i like about it well first and foremost it's sheer presence which can't even fit all on the frame is just really really pretty it's a really nice looking car um, of course it's a Porsche, so of course it's going to look good. Um, and it's a race car, so obviously it's going to look good there too. Um, so now that you get into the features, uh, let's start with the front. So starting with the front, well, there's not really much to say about the front actually, other than I do like this, how they use these little, uh, large gear pieces, uh, or sections to create the front sort of scoop of the vehicle. That's a neat attention to detail. Uh, of course, I do like the, just the hood design. I like the sort of raised portion just to add that extra bit of 3D to the front. Uh, sadly, the, the roof does not come off. This is fixed. It's not going anywhere, which really sucks because I, because you have to kind of look through the dashboard to see the gear, uh, the gear system that operates, of course, the steering, which eh, sucks. Uh, then you got these big uh, front headlights, or lamps, or I don't want to call them, uh, using these interesting little, uh, these are usually used for like little spacecraft and whatnot, these little uh, cockpit covers, uh, which you can lift up. You can actually see the headlights in there, which do use some uh, Lego system pieces, a couple little disc pieces. I believe it's, what is it, like a 2x2 like a two two little round plate here. And then you got a couple 
uh, little clear stud pieces. Uh, well, you get four of them uh, on each side uh, to get that headlight effect, which is really cool because, uh, you know, it, it's it's just a very nice thing. It's very nice uh, from the front. So spinning it around to the side now, you can see all the logos, just so many logos. I can't even, I'm not even going to begin to point all of them out, but I'm sure you can see them uh, fairly clearly. Uh, we have the doors, which of course do in fact open up. And on the inside of this door, you actually have a map of the Laguna Seca racetrack, where this car was actually seen racing in real life. So that is a really cool attention to detail, and it's right there inside the door. Uh, now into the actual interior, which to me looks absolutely disgusting. Uh, you do have the bucket seat uh, in there, which is a bit too low compared to how it is in the real car, but okay. Uh, and then you have the steering wheel, which does have a little bit of printed detail in there, uh, which is going to be very hard to see, but it is there. Uh, and if you move the steering wheel, of course, on the wheels will turn, which is kind of hard to demonstrate because the steering wheel on this car is a little bit floppy. Uh, and I did build this correctly. I double, triple, even quad, quadruple checked to make sure that I got the steering right. And yeah, the steering wheel is just very, very floppy. So not a big fan of that. As you can see, like, I mean, there is just way too much play in that steering wheel. Way too much play. For what it is. Um, on, on a lot of these other cars, it's much, much tighter. But on this one, it's just very, very floppy. That, and it kind of jiggles around a bit. I don't like that jiggle. I wish it could have been tightened a bit more. But eh, I guess that's about as good as you're going to get it. Um, so what do we have on the uh, other side? Door. Uh, just gotta spin the whole thing around. And yeah, this thing is surprisingly lightweight. For as big as this car is, uh, which I believe is about, what is it, 19 inches long, this car is? So yeah, pretty big vehicle. Um, it's... Eh, <laughs> it's it's surprisingly lightweight. Uh, on Over here on this side, you actually have the fire suppression system, which actually does have some stickers over here. So you got your little right uh, air intakes and this, that, the other to uh, right get smoke out of there. And of course on the driver's side, I forgot to mention on the top, there is the little uh, part which I believe you are, you are intended to break the top. So that way you can escape the vehicle if it gets into a horrific accident, which is of course really good to have. And just all in all, this interior just feels very hollow. Uh, if we if we look around here, we can see a little bit of the gearing, just a bit, uh, and a little bit of the dashboard in the middle as well, which does have some nice buttons and switches. Though sadly, I will not be able to give you a good look at that. So sorry, but still, I think you get the idea of what they're going for here. It's just I wish they would have filled out the floor a little more instead of just leaving it all gappy and skeletal like this because the real car is not nearly this hollow. So that's a bit of a... I'm not a big fan of that. So moving on to the back now, we do have these quote-unquote swan neck uh, little um, stabilizers here to help with this rear fin, which is pretty big for what it is. Uh, and of course, on the back, you do have the Porsche RSR, which uh, I'll get into that naming convention here in a minute, which I really don't like it. Um, and then we have, uh, as you can see, the tubing's not sitting right. Just gonna gently nudge it over. There we go. Uh, we do have this that tubing again. We have it here, here, and here, here. So that's fun. And then, of course, more stickers for the rear diffuser, which is surprisingly wide for a car like this. Uh, of course, you have the rear tail lights, which I do like uh, how the, how those are how done. They use little uh, what are called Borok eyes, for those who remember the old Bionicle toy line, which I'm sure you do, um, if you're, especially if you're watching this video. Um, then, yeah, it's using uh, four Borok eyes uh, in clear translucent red to, to, make, to get that lighting effect, which is really cool. And the right lighting, it really does look like the taillights are on, which is super cool. Um, of course, then you have this little light 
light over here to make sure that, hey, you can actually see the RSR down there. And then right here, we do have this little rear flap, which if we open it, we can get a look at the sit at the uh, v6 engine in there which yes it does in fact spin not only that but you can also see the exposed rear differential or rear diff so that is really cool flip it back down and one last feature for the car itself is that it does have full suspension systems so in the back you got that and then in the front got that so it's all detailed out for you. So, uh, let's see. Uh, spin the wheels forward. So, I think now we can segue nicely into the uh, specs for this car. Because there is quite a bit of information online. Unlike the Ford GT, yeah, there's quite a bit to go over with this car. So, if you don't mind to indulge me for a good couple minutes, uh, let me, you know, educate you on the Porsche 911 RSR. So, first off, let's go into the tech specs. So, first off, the engine is a water-cooled water six-cylinder boxer engine positioned in front of the rear axle. Uh, the displacement is 4,194 centimeters, what is that, uh, that's squared, yeah. Uh, the power is approximately 378 kilowatts, um, 515 PS, depending on the restrictor. Uh, the transmission is a six-speed, sorry, six-speed <laughs> dog-type transmission, weight-optimized, and the weight is approximately 1,245 kilos. So, yeah, pretty heavy vehicle compared to the replica here, which is uh, a little worryingly light. Uh, all right, so first of all, what does RSR mean? RSR comes from the German term Rennsport Rennwagen, a literal translation which means racing sports racing car. Yes, I know it sounds stupid, because it's like, wouldn't racing sports suffice? But, okay. Um, it is a non-menclature, purely reserved for competition versions of the Porsche 911 that are not street legal. Because, yes, this car is not street legal. Yeah, you're not going to see this thing cruising down the 95, okay? This thing is strictly for the track, and for the track only. So, yeah, that kind of sucks. But... It is what it is. I believe there were plans, actually, to make this thing street legal, from what I've been researching online, but eh, they just never did it, so that's a shame. Um, the, so, uh, what else we got? So, <laughs> so now let's go on to the bulk of this video, which is, of course, uh, some facts and information from Porsche themselves. So again, sit back, relax, grab a snack, because this is going to be a long one. So let's start off with the 911 RSR itself. If the three digits 911 are the epitome of the sports car, then the addition Racing Sports Racing represents the ideal image of an endurance race car. The new 911 RSR is made for the toughest races in the world, and it's the most uncompromising Gran, Gran Turismo or Grand Tourer race car we've ever built. I believe it's actually Grand Tourer, not Grand Turismo. Um, though I'm sure someone will be quick to correct me. Uh, team made. It's edge over 30,000 race victories in 70 years. It's drive our team of engineers, mechanics, drivers, and fans all over the world. The new 911 Racing Sports Racing... It, is the 911 for the greatest challenges, the big races, from Sebring to Le Mans. And the most uncompromising Grand Tourer endurance car we have ever built, born in flot. Its destinations are the most challenging long-distance races in the world. Its strength and overall concept, perfectly tailored to the equipments of modern Grand Tourer sports. But there is more to the new 911 racing sports racing, than the combined expertise of our engineers. It unites the dreams of our fans, our passions for motorsport, and the inspiration of all those who share sports car fascination with us. They made the new 911 RSR what it is, a race car, created by us all together. 
In short, the new 911 RSR. Team made. Perfection optimized. With the 911 RSR's predecessor, we introduced a change to the concept 911. For the first time, a 911 based race car used a flipped drivetrain. Since this revolution, we have been able to gather countless experiences on tens of thousands of, of kilometers of racing. Insights that we have applied to the development of the new 911 RSR. The expansion of the boxer eng engine displacement to 4.2 liters was just the beginning. Countless other improvements, all put through their paces, are hidden under the carbon fiber reinforced body. Aerodynamically optimized, this lightweight body not only improves the drivability of the 911 RSR even further, it was also designed for quick changeability and thus maximizes efficiency in long distance races. The six, seeds, the six speed sequential constant mesh transmission, weight optimized for our latest generation, features increased stiffness and durability. In addition, its extremely short shifting times have been shortened even further. Also shortened the exhaust system. Now opening to the side, its susceptibility to damage has been reduced greatly. An element which proves the overall 911 RSR concept stands for maximum consistency and endurance. Maximum control. Endurance motorsport is a team sport. Between engineers, drivers, and crew. And between the car and the pilot. What does this mean for the 911 RSR? Drivability is key. For this reason, it was constantly factored into every step of its development. Everything is designed to ensure maximum efficiency. The driver's hands stay on the steering wheel. Redundant functions are removed. The cockpit is designed to be as uncluttered and clear as possible. No distractions for maximum focus on the racing line, opponents, and good lap times. All to succeed in the toughest endurance races in the world. Progressive safety thinking. When the difference lies in every hundredth of a second, there is no time for doubt. Not one moment to hesitate. What counts is the perfect interaction between man and machine. Which is why we paid our fullest attention to the safety concept. And its predecessor as well as the new 911 RSR. Uh, the result set standards. With active safety measures such as collision avoidance system. Or the electronically activated fire extinguisher system. And with the passive safety measures guaranteed by the welded roll cage and the FIA side impact panel between the door and the cage. In addition, there is a removable roof hatch for cockpit access to the FIA compliant bucket seat. Rigidly attached to the bodywork, the driver is securely held by the six point racing safety harness, naturally prepared for the use with Hans. Its mission. If the numbers 911 are the, okay, hold on. Um, okay. Uh, if the, if the numbers 911 are the epitome of the sports car, then the additional RSR stands for the purest form of an endurance race car. Unlike any other race car, it has celebrated successes in grand tourer sport over generations. Uh, a tradition to the new 911 RSR is ready to continue and which once again was built for more than meeting the increasing demands of modern GT sports. It was built to exceed them trialed as the as a works car ready for the toughest long distance races in the world ready for the fia world endurance championship in the north american imsa weather tech sports car championship ready for legendary races from spa and le mans to sebring and daytona ready to give everything for its team and that's it for the uh, lecture. Hopefully y'all didn't fall asleep through that. And uh, so, yeah, that's quite a lot for a car of its, uh, for a rather, rather simple looking vehicle. Um, so now with that being said, we're going to take a quick jump cut. I'm going to go get a drink of water because that was a lot of reading. And let's go into some size comparisons. All right. So... For size comparisons, uh, let me scoot over the 911 RSR, and let's first start off with, hold on, start off with <laughs> the uh, the Chevy Camaro here uh, for comparison. Now, <laughs> can't remember its full name because it's quite a long one. But yeah, it's not even a really fair comparison, is it? 
Because, I mean, look at that. Look at that size difference. So you got this behemoth next to, you know, David over there. That is freaking the Camaro. So, yeah, pretty big size difference there. For our next comparison, we have this little pullback Porsche. I believe this is supposed to be an electric Formula One car. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Again... You can kind of see where the tiny one was inspired in terms of its coloring. So, because um, this seems to be a very common Porsche um, design here, at least for their race cars, is the sort of black, bright red, and white color scheme. With maybe a little bit of silver and some other colors mixed in there. But for the most part, that seems to be the consistent color. And, well... <laughs> Consistency is consistency here, isn't it? <laughs> For our next size comparison, here we have the Bugatti Bolide Agile Blue and, uh, version. And, yeah. <laughs> so, it's just, again, is this, even, is this even fair? Sorry. Is this even fair to even call a size comparison? Because, I mean, look at this. Look at this. I mean, like... <laughs> What? <laughs> it's just so funny how tiny the little uh, Bugatti is compared to the massive freaking Porsche. I almost called it a McLaren. Wow. Um, so, there we go. <laughs> Moving on. Now we have the 2022 Ford Grand Tourer next to it. And, again... Uh, it's funny because the actual chassis for this, I thought, was going to be about as, as big, if not bigger, than the Ford. But, oh, I was wrong. I was very wrong. As this Ford is, like, it's a good size, yes. But it's nothing compared to this massive thing. So, <laughs> there you have that. For our next comparison, here we have the Peugeot 9x8. A Le Mans hypercar. And again, you can really see that, yeah, they're not too far off in terms of their size. Uh, laying them up wheel to wheel, yeah, the Peugeot is slightly longer, and but both cars are equally, if not just as dense as each other in terms of just sheer, you know, like a piece count uh at least going into the bodywork and into the actual outer right components than it is so much the internal components because as i said with the porsche it's mostly most of the part density goes into the outer portions of the vehicle which you're actually looking at the inter in the internal skeleton not so much <laughs> um but and same goes with the Peugeot as well, where it's where it's kind of the same way, where it's just a total skeleton. There's not much going on, but it's the outside where most of the pieces are going. So there you go. And last but certainly not least, I have to give it to a comparison with the ultimate Lego Technic race car, let alone the supercar in my collection. The Lamborghini Sion FKP37 next to it. And it, and again, the Porsche barely even, if we scoot it back a bit, barely even manages to outdo this amazing titan of a set. <laughs> Not only just in terms of price, but in terms of the sheer piece count. Because, I mean, okay, this set, this set, as hard as it is to build is one thing. But this, yeah, this is a whole other beast. <laughs> uh, which, again, definitely go back and check out my, my uh, full video on this amazing titan of a set. But, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty significant there, isn't it? Alright guys, so outside of all the cons I've said about this set, about the abysmal, not abysmal, but the very uh, chore-like uh, nature of this build, and <laughs> the sheer size of this thing, 
uh, which, if I didn't mention this already, I'm slowly but surely running out of room for cars this big in my collection now. So I think on that note, this is maybe where it's going to maybe where it's going to end for these large scale uh, replica cars in my collection for now. For now. Either until I move, which uh, I don't know if that's ever going to happen, or until I finally actually get the time to clear out some more space in my house, then yeah, we could to I'll totally add more of these into the collection. But for now, this is where it ends uh, for my collection, which really sad to say, uh, at least in terms of these large scale cars. So, um, and I'm probably going to say that and then immediately get another one. So, mm -hmm. but anyways, thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy this, please make sure to drop a like on this video, subscribe if you're new, and ring that notification bell so that way you guys get notified for all my uploads. And do let me know in the comments what other sort of Lego sets you want me to do next. As, uh, I do have a couple Minecraft sets I wanted to do a review on for a while now. I got a more recent one. And, uh, who knows, maybe at some point I might do a, just a large overall look of my entire Lego car collection, because trust me, there's a lot, and, uh, I would love to do just an end-all, be-all, you know, one big review on just every single car I have, of course, including Technic and just Lego system, uh, cars that I have. And that includes, that's going from Speed Champions to Creator Expert to Ideas, just all that stuff. So, that being said, guys, thank you guys for watching. Later, Eat Squad, and have a good one.